Hello, Scorpio, and welcome to your October 2021 reading. So today I'm going to be doing a three-card spread for you, indicating your most recent past, your present for October 2021, and the potential future outcome moving forward. I'm going to be using the Light Sears Tarot for this spread today and clarifying those three cards in those three areas with the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit deck. I do want to preface by saying that I don't have all of these cards' meanings memorized yet, so there may be a time that I need to take a peek in the book to, you know, share that energy with you. Um, I also, I don't know, I like, I have been recently liking to read the guidebook definitions for the animal spirit deck simply because I feel like they're relating so much to the tarot and the messages in the actual book are, you know, messages that needed to be heard for those who, you know, are receiving them at the time. So yeah, I've been enjoying it, but just wanted to share that with you anyways. Let's jump right in and see what we have going on for all of my Scorpio friends for the month of October. Please, universe, spirits, guides, angels, our cosmic team, our ancestors, our higher selves, what can you tell me about Scorpio's most recent past, please? That's too many, and that was, that was totally me. All right, what can you tell me about Scorpio's most recent past, please? All right, the Six of Pentacles coming up here. So the Six of Pentacles is this representation of giving and receiving, right? Being open to give, being open to receive. And I often see this card, not always, but often as that give and take between self and the universe, right? Um, probably not how most people would read this, but... I read intuitively a lot of the time, and so while the cards do have their definitions and I tend to read that intuitively, there are times that the pictures or other messages come through in relation to those cards, but it's just a little bit different than the actual, you know, definitions that you would find, say, in the guidebook. So Six of Pentacles showing up for you in the most recent past. And what can you tell me about Scorpio presently, please, for October 2021? What is Scorpio currently experiencing? What do we need to know about what Scorpio is currently experiencing, please? The King of Wands. Okay, so in your present position, Scorpio, you have this, this card that represents uh, a, a natural leader, right? Um, in, um, entrepreneurial spirit, um, or energy, right? That same kind of motivation. This is also represents fire energy. We do have the lion back there as well. So, I mean, really Scorpio being in a king of wands energy is not exactly a bad space to be in. We'll dive more into the cards and what they mean as, you know, after we've gotten some clarifiers out and things. I do like to touch base on it a little bit as we go through, just so I'm not sitting here pulling cards quietly and that's awkward, <laughs> right? So, um, we'll, again, we'll dive a little bit deeper into those meanings as we go through the cards, but let's find out what's showing up for your potential future outcome. What do we have going on for Scorpio? In the future, what can potentially come from the situation that they find themselves in currently, please? What is the potential future outcome for Scorpio? Potential future outcome. Oh, did you see that? Okay, Five of Wands. Five of Wands does represent conflict. It can be inner mental, you know, the inner turmoil um, with self. But this is also a card of... Um, how do I want to, it's almost like preparation, right? Like if you see, I kind of think of this as like, you have these beings in, in this um, card here that look like they're wearing like 
acrobatic or gym clothes, right? Things that are very easy to move in and they're kind of traversing or navigating what, you know, kind of looks like an obstacle course of sorts. So I feel like this is like preparation, right? This is like getting ready for, for, you know, what's to come. Interesting. Bottom of the deck for you, Scorpio, is the two of cups. This is union this is duality duality excuse me this can sometimes signify marriage or union um this can also be kindred souls coming together right community uh friendships soulmates romantic partners coming in that sort of thing but this is what is excuse me how i see the bottom of the deck is you know what's beneath the surface so we have that there Let's get out our clarifiers. Why do we have the Six of Pentacles for Scorpio in the most recent past, please? That was fast. The bear, which I do know the bear represents a um, awakening, or excuse me, waking from a spiritual slumber. This also re represents beginning anew. This is that... Um, the difficulty like if you think about it I always have this joke that's like I have to recover from waking up right like every night after I go to sleep and then wake up in the morning like I need that time to like recover from coming back into reality like I, I need a few moments to myself right and this bear energy talks about um, you know having to wake up from that slumber having to you know experience this this um awakening and and it's time right it's time to move through it it's time to start over as far as you know this new spiritual beginning is concerned so interesting why do we have the king of wands presently for scorpio please what can you tell me about this present situation and the king of wands for scorpio there it is the shark. Okay. You guys, you know what I just had? It just dropped in. It's so funny. Um, shark Tank. That show, you guys remember that show, Shark Tank? Um, because the King of Wands is an entrepreneur. So I think it's really funny that I had that correlation just pop in. Like I haven't watched that show in forever. It feels like lifetimes ago. And it's just, I don't know, it's just weird that that would pop in. It's so funny. So maybe some of you are presently looking at starting a business, right? Or maybe you have this business idea that you haven't yet really, um, maybe you've pursued it a little bit, right? Maybe you've um, done a little bit here and there, but it's maybe not a booming business. I don't know why I got that, but you know, you may be in those beginning stages of starting a business or maybe considering it, maybe you're mapping it out, right? I just get that feeling of there's, there's something here about business for, for you, Scorpio. So why the five of wands for the potential future outcome, please? Why the five of wands for the potential future outcome? There it is. Nope, that's too many. Why the why the five of wands for the potential future outcome? Why does Scorpio have this five of wands for the future outcome? Please, there it is. Thank you. The fox. Okay, I have not seen this card yet, so that'll be interesting. All right, at the bottom of the deck, we do have the gazelle here. So it's beneath the surface. We have this gazelle energy. All right, so let's jump in. The In your most recent past, you again have this Six of Pentacles for you, Scorpio, showing up. So again, that Six of Pentacles is really, you know, that, that abundance of that giving and receiving. This is also um, a representation of awakening and inflow or help coming from others, right? It's about, you know, um, being grateful, like being grateful for, for life, right? And, and being generous and compassionate because of that, that gratitude, right? And I think it's, I think it's pretty interesting how the cards work right because 
<clears throat> they'll always it'll it, it seems to me they'll always find those cards that that correlate with one another right because the six of pentacles normally isn't a card that i readily or initially associate with awakening but it's here and the bear is that representation of awakening as well so let me just pull out the guidebook and jump into this bear energy we have here right so hmm this is interesting i'm not so when i get quiet you guys i kind of tend or usually tend to have stuff dropping in so when I get quiet, like I'll in the middle of conversation, just all of a sudden um, know that a lot of times it's because I'm having information drop in about the read. Okay, so let's talk about this bear, though. Um, again, that's the energy of awaking from spiritual slumber and beginning anew. You know, in the Six of Pentacles does represent that awakening. It says here, after a long winter, the bear arises from deep slumber. At first, the movement and effort are difficult. But the bear knows it's time to awaken and move toward the dawning light. The bear card represents an individual on the cusp of new directions and personal transformation. The initial weeks and months of this spiritual quest may feel tricky, cumbersome, and full of obstacles, but you have no choice, bear. Winter wanes, the warmth of spring emerges, and your transformation begins. Right. So it says here when this is out of balance, the bear energy is with, you know, in a state of withdrawal, uh, lethargy, lethargy, lethargy. I don't even know. I know it's like lethargic. Is it? I don't know how to say it. Like as it's I don't know. Anyway, um, and heaviness. Right. To bring it back into balance. Movement and exercise is suggested. And when in balance, it'll be noticed as this inner strength and yearning to grow. Okay. So the six of pentacles, you know, being that representation of the giving and receiving or abundance, but also of, you know, this energy of awakening. What in the sh... You guys, that was the weirdest shit ever seriously just had this fly which has been flying around my my freaking room all day like fall like it was dead on my table here right next to me as I'm doing this reading and I like looked at it like what in the what's going on and then it legit just flew away like got up and flew away so I don't know if you you Scorpios got like nine lives or what the hell's going on but we have, you know, again, this six of pentacles. I'm very sorry for the distraction. Um, pretty sure I have, you know, some form of ADHD. Um, but anyways, the six of pentacles, you know, is again, that, that giving and receiving here. And I find it interesting because, you know, the bear talks about that spiritual slumber and that yearning to grow when it's brought into balance. And a lot of times, I mean, let's, let's, let's take a minute, you know, to just be real about some things for a second, because a lot of times that growth that we experience or, or when we, we yearn to grow, we, we do so through experiences with other people, right? And the universe will often right place people in our lives to create that growth as you know they can be a catalyst you know there, there there are so many different ways people can be placed in your life as as a means for you to grow through that experience with them right and so i i don't know why it's really strange i've never picked up this type of energy from the six of pentacles card here or, or correlated it this way but i really feel this energy of the universe, like going through this, this spiritual awakening, right? Because these cards here, our clarifiers tell us why these cards have shown up in the positions that they have. So 
why has the six of pentacles shown up in the position of your most recent past well because you've been going through this spiritual awakening you've been beginning anew and perhaps even yearning to have more growth spiritually right to continue that awakening to take it to that next step right perhaps you've been in that energy in the most recent past and the universe i feel you know has been allowing or rather um seeding that growth by placing people in your life that you are giving and receiving information right where you're you're sharing your experiences with someone else right maybe bits of your awakening maybe you know i don't know what that means for you bits of your healing things that you've done and then others are in turn sharing their experiences with you and you are thus learning through that and i feel like there's that huge pull or draw to learn about spiritual awakening and to really learn how to navigate that right how to um to move through that with ease and i feel like that giving and receiving around spirituality is that knowledge that wisdom that you gain through that so you may in your recent past have experienced this awakening and perhaps had spirit or the universe drop people into your life that helped to facilitate that or are helping to um i want to say to like to continue to facilitate the curiosity right but i feel like there's already like that that yearning to grow and these people are helping you to do that by by sharing their own wisdom their own knowledge right by by um continuing to to spark that curiosity within you by giving you information right i i don't know it's it's really interesting how that energy is coming through because i've never had it come through that way ever right and i've been reading with the light seers tarot for since oh my gosh it's been a while okay it's been a while um I, so, you know, I feel like that that's pretty profound, right? And I, fe I feel like, um, well, you know, I would love it. Please leave me feedback, Libra, if, if this resonates with you, because I would, I would love to know, I would love the feedback, um, to know, you know, if this is resonating, if you had somebody come into your life recently, who's helped you grow through this spiritual experience, you know, who's given knowledge and wisdom and shared those experiences and, and modalities with you and you have done that with them and how that's impacted you. You know, obviously you don't have to tell me your life story. You don't have to tell me anything, but I would love to hear if this resonates with you or not. So let's talk about your present energy because we do have this King of Wands here being clarified by the shark. I'm going to go ahead and find this shark definition yes and let's talk about the king of wands i mean i do love the king of wands let's i don't i mean i don't know who's if you played or you know dabbled in tarot or had readings done um a lot of people have like their favorite kings and knights and pages and things like that in the tarot um he's i, I, I don't want to say i have favorites but i definitely like the king of wands right sorry about the camera you guys i'm shaking the table um i do like the king of wands it could be because i'm a fire sign and that's just me but again he does represent that entrepreneurial spirit right or a natural born leader the having these super ultra <clears throat> excuse me these um ultra successful ideas and being this creative visionary right the the king of wands represents that success that passionate and 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 being um hard field building an empire right so i love that energy for you and i feel like i mean really you may have stepped into that energy after experiencing this awakening maybe you didn't think you wanted to be a business owner before right maybe maybe you've just been a good leader maybe you've been a team leader at work and you know you've always kind of been in a leadership role or maybe people look up to you um but you may have not ever thought about pursuing a business of your own or opening a business of your own. That may have been something that, you know, could have been a little bit new for you. Well, let's find out because 
the, the shark is showing up here to, you know, clarify why the King of Wands has stepped up for us today. And the shark represents directness, exposure, and revealing true nature and desire. Wow. What was I just fucking saying? Holy shit, you guys. I just said you may have not even known you wanted to be a business owner. Okay. Again, this might not be true for everyone. Take it if it resonates. I'll leave it if it doesn't. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Okay. It's your story, not mine. So again, take it if it resonates. But we were just talking about, you know, that, that um, you may not have even known that you wanted to be a business owner until going through the spiritual experience. <clears throat> the shark is only dangerous when we don't acknowledge it. This card indicates that something big needs to be exposed. It's lurking in the depths and creating tension. Shark energy takes over us when we are hesitant to be honest, to be totally ourselves, or to say what we really want. It may be tempting to continue pretending nothing is wrong, but when shark energy is at play, we feel its presence encircling us, right? So, you know, or here's the thing, guys, maybe you have wanted to be a business owner. Maybe you have wanted to, you know, be in this position of leadership in regards to your job or, or, you know, your calling, right? Maybe that has been you. Maybe you, maybe you've kind of had that little inkling, right? Um, but you haven't been honest about it. Maybe you've been hiding that because you don't feel safe, right? Maybe you don't, Maybe you feel judged. Maybe you're worried about what others will say or think. Maybe you're worried about your family. Maybe, you know, there are umpteen million different things that, that, you know, could prevent someone from revealing that they want to own their own business or to be in a position of leadership or, you know, that they have this creative vision that they want to bring into reality. That can be very fucking scary to do, to step into that, right? That can, it can be, um, very intimidating, right? But I feel like the king of, right, we're saying, why is the king of wands here? You know, why is this, this leadership energy, this, this, um, entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurial, excuse me, energy, you know, why is this, this, um, visionary energy, leadership energy? Why is that here? Well, I feel like it's here because, this is what we want. This is the position that we want to be in or that we are called to be in, right? It may not even be something that you're like, yes, that's what I want to do. But you keep feeling this pull, even if you're like, I don't even, maybe you're like, I don't even want to have a YouTube channel. And, but you keep feeling like, oh, maybe I should do a YouTube channel about that. Right? Like, I feel like, I feel it's like that, like that. I don't know. You guys tell me. I'm over it now. <laughs> But I feel like, um, you know, the shark energy is here to let us know, like, whatever our truth is in regards to this vision that we have, whatever that means for you, whether that's running your own business or not, okay, whatever this vision that we have for ourselves is in the present moment, the shark is like, it, it's here because it needs to be addressed. It needs to be um, exposed. It needs to be out in the light, right? It needs to be pursued. It needs to be no longer hidden, no longer stuffed down, right? It needs that exposure and it needs, you know, I feel like that is what's going to help to reveal the truth of who you are. Again, this could be a business pr pursuit for some. You may be looking at opening a business of your own or starting a business of your own. But if that is not the case for you, then I feel like this is more so about that. It's almost like the, 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 um, the leadership that comes and being very honest, direct, and true. Right? So, Again, if it's not a business or, you know, something along those lines for you that you're looking at, then I would definitely, you know, consider that it may be rather that you're being asked to really stand in your truth about and, and take that leadership position over your own life, 
right? And speak the truth about what you want and desire. Speak the truth about who you truly are, right? If you're working in, let's say, I don't know, you're working as a a bartender, which there's nothing wrong with bartenders. I'm just using this as an example. Let's say you're working as a bartender and you're just like, yeah, I'm fine. This is my life. I'm, I'm happy with it. It's good. Right. But your, you, your truth is more of like, or who, you, you know, your truth and who you truly are is more of an energy of, you know, the bar manager, right. Or owning a bar. It's like, stop, Stop playing small. I, I don't know who that message is for, but that's, it's coming. Th it just came, it just dropped in my field. Like stop playing small. Like, cause this is this energy, this energy of a fucking shark, right? Of a king is of a, a lion is not going to play small. These are predatory creatures, right? Even a king is going to take what he wants. Even a king is going to be like, this is what I need. I'm going to get it. Like the, the Kings back in the day would, you know, tax the, tax the fuck out of the, of the, of their subjects to be able to put on a big party for themselves. Right. So, you know, it, when you think about it, like, I feel like the energy right now is calling you to step into that version of yourself and recognize that strength, recognize the leadership qualities that you hold within, the leadership of a king, the leadership of a lion, the leadership of a shark. Like a shark isn't going to look at a guppy and be like, nah, I'm scared. Like I'm going to run away. Mm -mm. Nah, not happening. Right? A lion's not going to look at a gazelle and be like, you know, like you're, you, you, you're a lion too. No, 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 no. That's not how that works. Right. They're predators. And, and, and I feel like this is, is really, wow. I don't know why this is a different kind of energy coming through Scorpio because I feel like I, here's the thing. I, I mean, I do have a son who is a Scorpio, okay? He, which is interesting. He's a Scorpio um, son, a Libra rising and an Aquarius moon, okay? So just for anyone who, you know, feel like they may relate. And he is in his teens. But with him, you know, Scorpio, it's very kind of introvert. It's very kind of like I have all of these really awesome talents and skills and they it's kind of like they'll come out and brag about it a little bit, but a lot of times it's something that's more inwardly kept, right? It's not something that they share or outwardly express at least in my experience. And so I feel like this energy here is like, nah, we're not keeping that on lock anymore. Like you've always had it within you. Like I know my son has these tremendous, incredible leadership qualities about him, but he tends to be introverted and keep those things within, right? And if this resonates with you as a Scorpio and you can relate, I feel like the universe is like, kind of like, it's time to go. <laughs> it's time to wake up. It's time to step into that fucking power. It's time to step into that predatory, you know, type of energy that, that, that go getter leadership type of energy and, and pursue, you know, what it is you really want in the present moment right now. That's how I feel this energy coming through for you in the present position. Okay. So as far as what the future could hold, right? let's see what we have going on. I've never had this Fox card. So it'll be interesting for me learning what's going on here for you guys. Let's see. Give me just a moment. I'm going to try to find it as quickly as possible. One second. There it is. Okay. And then, you know, we have that five of wands there and, and it does, you know, it does represent that, um, like a competition or conflict or ambition and challenges. Um, you can think of it as like a mental jousting of sorts, even right. Uh, the five of five of wands here, but it is also about, you know, surpassing your limits, 
dynamic energy and leveling up, right? I mean, even if you look here on, on this card, and even though there are more than, there's more than one character or, or being on this card, right? It's like reaching new heights, like this guy's down here and maybe in awe of this person who has, you know, reached up here. It's also a card of competition. <laughs> All right, so... Let's talk about the fox, though, because that's going to give us a little bit more on why this five of wands is showing up. So the fox represents this strong, or excuse me, the fox represents a smart, strong partner or mate and can also represent a wise teacher. The fox is an enchanting creature with plenty of mystique to go around. Fox personalities are skillful in business, <laughs> okay, and also make great teachers. What did I say, Scorpio? You're a fucking leader, okay? You're just a fucking leader. Um, they are quick to learn and adapt well to new situations. Whoops, sorry, guys. Um, foxes are ideal life partners as they commit to relationships for the long term and their natural charisma keeps things exciting. Fox energy helps us to stay true to those most dear to us. When this card appears, reconnect to those you love. Foxes don't do well when they slip away. Okay, so when out of balance, this energy is sneaky and unsure of its, ener of its identity. Right. And to be brought back into balance, partnership and connection is what's encouraged in order for, you know, the fox to have this balanced energy and feel magical. Um, magnam <laughs> I'm not even going to try to say that word again because I know I'm going to botch it. Um, but magical or an ingenious teacher. Right. So. And then the five of wands is here talking about competition and conflict. Um, you know, to me, it tends to be this energy of, um, you know, getting ready, kind of, you know, um, preparing, if you will, which I mean, maybe is maybe the fox is showing up. Why is the five of wands here? Maybe you're preparing for a partner or mate to come in or a teacher. But because we have the King of Wands talking about leadership and business and those types of qualities, okay, the leadership types of qualities or being an entrepreneur, and then we have this Five of Wands talking about competition, right, um, and conflict and challenge and, um, you know, like brainstorming or mental jousting and, and, and that sort of thing being clarified by the Fox that has this represent like, skillful and business, right? Talking about that. I feel like there are a couple of stories here. One, you may in the, you know, in the future, right? Because this is what is the potential outcome? What can potentially happen in the future, right? Um, I feel like you may have someone come in as a business partner or or someone who collaborates with you on a particular project but offers you this dynamic that you don't have right like it, they oh and my head's all tingly now too um it, it's like your vision is great it's phenomenal it's incredible right it's this amazing vision whatever that means for you someone else though even th even though you may think you have all the bases covered and you have all the things and your vision doesn't need tweaking or altering of any kind someone else could come in and offer their dynamic energy into it right this new dynamic right they can come in offer that and it can you know, create this incredible, um, um, 
magical type of connection, right? It can create this, this union, which is interesting because we have the fucking two of cups at the bottom of the deck of the tarot. So what's beneath the surface and the two of cups represents union, kindred spirits, connections, community coming together, right? So you may have, you know, a business partner or, you know, just not even necessarily business again, because this could, I feel like it's just whatever that vision is for you, right? Um, and that could be a business, but does not have to be. I feel like you have somebody else who comes in and offers their input, right? They offer their pizzazz, if you will into the situation, right? Which can alter and change things and ultimately make, make like can ultimately create this like leveling up of sorts, right? A lot of people as far as spirituality is concerned, believe like this is, you know, a lot of it's solo, which it is. It's very, it very much is. Um, there's a lot of time that's spent on this healing spiritual journey that is, you know, done by yourself. It can get very, very, very lonely. However, people that we meet, that we come into contact to, that we have relationships with, you know, um, that are placed in our life often offer us or hold for us downloads of information or, you know, um, can become channels for spirit to be like, Hey, why don't you do this? And that's, it's just, it can be something so fucking small and seems so fucking insignificant, but that one little tiny thing can completely transform your world, your reality, right? So they could come in and I know this is going to sound really, really ridiculous, but play along for a moment. Say you create this business, right? You, you have the building up and it's great. And um, you've got lights installed and drywall and all of these things and you show your friend this color that you want to put on the wall, right? Let's let's say it's this yellow color and your friend's like, man, that's terrible. I wouldn't do that. Um, you know, maybe have some yellow highlights, but let's try that color. I think that color would be good. And it could, I mean, you might not see it, right? You might not know it, but if you would have painted the, the walls if your business this yellow color, people could come in and feel uncomfortable, right? It's, maybe it's not as warm to your audience as this, this teal color would be on the wall, right? Maybe it doesn't have that same energetic feeling as that teal color on the wall. So people wouldn't like want to hang around if that makes sense. Right. And I know that sounds kind of silly, um, but colors do influence mood. OK, so. I would, you know, share with you that this person could come in and offer something very small, but incredibly relevant and, you know, and incredibly um, even profound, perhaps to your journey, to your vision, right? They may have something amazing to offer you. The other story that I'm picking up here is that, you know, perhaps for those of you who do who or have decided, like I want to go into business, right? Because we do have the Fox talking about being skilled at business, right? That it was in the definition there. And then the five of wands, here's the thing. I think, you know, you may feel like you have competition in that area, that arena that you want to play in. Okay. There may be tons of competition, but what the Fox is, you know, it's like the Fox is here to why is the five of wands here? Well, the fox is like, okay, well, look, you're, you have a skill, right? You're a natural born leader. You have an entrepreneurial spirit. So it's like you have this, the fox is, why are the, the five of wands is here is like, okay, this competition may present itself in the future, but, but, but I feel like it's here to to show you how skilled you really are right if that makes any sense i hope that makes sense um and then i you know it also in addition to like showing you how skilled you really are 
you know, I feel like you probably when, if that competition starts to feel heavy or, you know, um, or, you know, you kind of feel like you're getting lost in that. I feel like there's someone that's in your corner who you can turn to, to help resolve that, right? Because the fox is that smart, strong partner or mate and wise teacher, right? Um, so, you know, with, with being skillful in business and making these great teachers um, and, and really caring about the energy of those that we have around us, you know, I mean maybe that competition that you're seeing isn't really competition at all. Maybe you can just actually learn from that person. Holy shit, that just dropped in like a ton of bricks. I wish she could have seen it or felt it or something. Because that's, I feel like that's probably the core of the message on how heavy that just hit in is, you know, what you may see as competition coming through in the future isn't really competition at all, but rather is a wise teacher trying to come in and, um, um, trying to help you to, you know, to remain true, trying to help you to, you know, level up and succeed, right? Fascinating. This energy is super fascinating. All right, let's talk about what's beneath the surface before we run out of time. Uh, we have the gazelle here at the bottom of the animal spirit deck. So what's beneath the surface with this gazelle? Let's talk about it if I can find it. <laughs> I haven't had this card too much either. So where are you? Thank you for your patience while I look for this. I really, really appreciate it. All right. So the gazelle is here. What's beneath the surface? We have heightened awareness, ability, and vulnerable. Okay. Um, the gazelle represents supreme grace. With every move, this awe-inspiring beauty emits sophistication and elegance. Gazelle personalities are often hyper-aware of their surroundings, bordering, oops, sorry, guys, bordering on hyper -vigilant. Yeah, and this can inhibit them from enjoying the beauty they've spent so much effort cultivating. No more worrying about all those predators out there in the wild. When this card appears, it's time to get back to the present moment. Sit down, find your breath, and acknowledge the bounty that surrounds you. Let it nourish your gentle spirit. Okay, so this is what is beneath the surface. Let's talk about the two of cups before we really, you know, jump in. I don't have too much time left, but I really want to talk about it because I feel like, you know, what's beneath the surface is, can be very, very, um, important in this journey and it can help to really ease, right. Or navigate the journey a little bit easier. So this two of cups, right. talks about again, um, those romantic partners or soulmates and friendships, uh, connected hearts, right? Candid spirits can be union as well, right? Um, joyful connection and cooperation, sometimes marriage, duality, and love consciousness. Now, I okay. So here's what here here's the thing. I'm feeling. Because there's a, this entire deck with the exception of the gazelle or spread, excuse me, not deck, this entire spread, we have the bear, a predator. We have the lion, a predator. We have the shark, a predator. We have the fox, a predator, right? So what's hidden beneath the surface here, right? You may have felt like you can't trust people. You may have felt like, um, you, you, you need to be, you know, watching people and minding your P's and Q's and making sure that, that, you know, nobody's stabbing you in the back, making sure that you're the predator, making sure that you're the one that's on top. And what I'm seeing here is, you know, stepping back and really stepping more into that vulnerability to allow these, these this cooperation of you know kindred spirits of souls of community to collaborate with each other and not have that resistance not have that tension not have that predator versus prey type of dynamic right 
super fascinating, but I feel like, you know, really Scorpio, just, I would encourage you to try to lean into, um, you know, these relationships with an open mind and open heart, knowing that you are, you know, you have the predatory, um, or, and the leadership qualities within you to, to really help guide you through that. And not everyone is out to get you. Okay, not everyone is out to to screw you over, to hurt you, to harm you, right? You can create beautiful, beautiful relationships with people, okay? So give yourself that opportunity. Please remember to take what resonates, leave what doesn't. I really hope this has been helpful for you in some kind of way, if nothing else entertaining. And I hope that it provides you with, you know, some kind of um, guidance for the the rest of October and the months to follow as we close out 2021. Have a beautiful, beautiful month. I'm sending you so much love, tons of hugs, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.